take off my mask here and I'll get far, far away. We're going to go through the book of Acts for a couple months. Uh, pray for me that I stay in it. I, it's kind of hard for me to go through one book forever, forever. I kind of start feeling like I get lost in it. But pray for me because every word of God is needful and true. And so today, am I still amplified? Yeah, you are. Just in and out. Move the cord. Test, test. There we go. Test. Okay. Acts chapter 1. Let's read. Put it in your other pocket. What's that? Put it on this side. Put it, put it I think it's good for right now. I'll try that if it. Test. There we go. Acts chapter 1. Today I want to talk to you about the Holy Spirit and the Kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit and the Kingdom of God. And that's kind of going to be the theme of the next couple of months. And there's a lot of subtopics that are going to come up. Okay, I better listen to Donna. Left pocket. That could have been a word of wisdom. Test, test. It's because I don't have your anointing. Yeah, that might be it. <laughs> Acts chapter 1. Let's read the Word of God, verses 1 to 11. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen. To whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you, are, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Today I want to start out on this passage. I'm probably going to preach on it again next week. Uh, sorry to the worship committee. I'm already changing the schedule. Um, Theophilus. It's Dr. Luke who some believe was a, a guest of Theophilus. An employee, a house doctor, a servant. And they both knew the Lord. And so he wrote the Gospel of Luke. And now he's writing a second book about the continued works and ministry of Jesus. Luke says, I began to write to you the beginning works, the beginning teachings of Jesus, referring to the Gospel. But now he says, Jesus is continuing to teach, continuing to work. And we know that he did. And we know that he does. He did through the Apostle Paul, Peter, John. You read after the book of Acts, the epistles, all the way to the book of Revelation. Jesus continued to teach. The Spirit of Jesus taught through his apostles. How many of you know the Spirit of Jesus still continues to teach? Amen. He teaches you. He taught Megan this week about, uh, what was it, Jeremiah or Ezekiel? Ezekiel. Ezekiel. He's teaching and so that's an invitation, open up the word, because not only did Jesus teach in, in the Gospel of Luke, not only is he teaching through uh, the apostolic writings, he continues to teach, and that's why Paul says we have the Holy Spirit that explains spiritual things in 1 Corinthians from normal things, and we have the Spirit of God, he, he's teaching. The other awesome thing is that for 40 days, Jesus visited his apostles. It doesn't say that for 40 days every day he was with them. But he came 
left, came left, came left. That's kind of authentic. Don't you ever feel that way? That sometimes the Holy Spirit or Jesus comes to you, but then in your humanity, you feel like, I don't feel you. I mean, we know he's always in it. He lives inside of us. He never leaves you nor forsakes you. But from our human perspective, doesn't it seem sometimes he comes, leaves, comes, leaves? I like the fact that Luke points out for 40 days, Jesus visited us because what he's saying from the beginning is that Jesus is alive. The book of Acts and the kingdom gospel, genuine Christianity, we should always affirm Jesus is alive. And even though sometimes we don't feel him because of our humanity, our emotions, our body, our circumstances, strained relationships, because some of those things I just mentioned stop us from feeling the kingdom or the presence of Jesus, don't they? This COVID-19, turn on the news and you probably won't feel the presence of Jesus. You're going to feel all kinds of other emotions. But Jesus is alive, and that should be a reality, even if we don't feel it, even if we don't sense it. We should live by faith, saying, Jesus, you're alive. You're alive to my life. You're alive to my strained relationships. You're alive to my financial challenges. You're alive even to certain particular sins that I'm struggling to get the best of. Does anyone else have particular sins that you kind of have been fighting with for a long time? Yeah. Even fibbing is one, and some of you aren't lifting your hands. <laughs> yeah, we all have. But Jesus is alive to our failures. He's alive to every part of our life. And that's what the book of Acts affirms. He's alive. He was with us for 40 days. And that's the type of faith that we should have. Jesus, you're alive. Even when I don't feel you. Even when I can't sense you. I expect you. And I'm looking forward to the fact that you're going to come alive at some point in my co-worker's marriage, in my adult child struggle, in my financial strain. I know you're going to come alive. Doesn't that give us hope when we know that Jesus is alive? He's not dead. He's alive. And sometimes our minds tell us Jesus is dead to your life because you've blown it or because you haven't felt him for a long time. But the book of Acts tells us in the first chapter that our Lord is alive. So, he tells Theophilus what he's writing about, a detailed account. Jesus is alive for 40 days. To me, that's historical evidence. We believe things in school with two or three witnesses that happened for a week. Here's something that happened for 40 days. And at one time, he was seen by over 120 people at one time. And they were willing to die for it, be martyrs for it. I don't know about you, if I was telling a fib right about when they were getting the guillotine ready or the axe ready, I'd be like, okay, I was kidding, just trying to make some money. <laughs> but the fact that these fellows were willing to die, they really did see Jesus for 40 days. We really can experience the living Jesus, even in our challenges and hard times. Jesus is alive. So then in verse 3 and in verse 6, in verse 3 it says, he talked about the kingdom of God during the 40 days. And after hearing so much about the kingdom of God, the apostles said, At this time then, are you going to restore the kingdom of God to Israel? And Jesus didn't tell them, Oh, you got it wrong. He just said, You know, the, 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 the specific time when Christ is going to return and hand the kingdom over to the Father and consummate the kingdom, Nobody knows. God, the Father, has reserved that time for his own knowledge. But he says, you're going to be witnesses. And I'm going to talk more about that next week. But he says, he didn't rebuke them for asking if the kingdom of God was going to be turned over to Israel. He just said, the timing's not yet. And theologians call what happens in the book of Acts, inauguration, a launch. Some of you have been to a new church launch. This was like the first church launch, inauguration of the kingdom of God, but we're waiting for the consummation of the kingdom of God. When Messiah returns to the earth, lives in Jerusalem, and we realize toward the end of the prophets and in the writings of the New Testament that it's really not only 
about Israel. It's about the whole world. Messiah is coming for the whole world. Did you know that God's people inherit the whole world? Say the whole world. The whole world was the promise to Abraham, which was really the King Messiah. He's physically coming, and we're going to live with him in a physical body. I don't know why, but in the last 20 or 30 years, preachers have only been talking about heaven. When you die, you're in the presence of Jesus, because we're human beings and we're all fraidy cats. I love the idea of being with Jesus, but the process I'm kind of a chicken of, like, you know, sitting there, falling off a cliff, dying on a motorcycle, whatever. But the concept of being with Christ, I love that. But the process, kind of a chicken. But so the idea of being with Jesus comforts us. But that's just temporary. That's vi heaven is temporary. People say, you know, it's eternal. No, heaven is temporary. What we're really looking for, or at least what Jesus says is what's going to happen all through the prophet's uh, revelation, is that King Jesus is going to live in this world. And the Gentiles and descendants of Hebrews together are going to go to the temple which is Jesus and we're going to learn and and live together in this world Messiah Jesus our king is going to settle disputes stuff that we see being played out in the streets and protests Jesus is going to fix all that stuff viruses that are wreaking havoc Jesus is going to take care of that in a physical world and sometimes we forget that, that we're actually going to get our bodies back, fellowship together in a world where there's no war, no racism, no inequ uh, inequity. King Messiah is going to do that. And so he says this is the beginning of it. Yes, that's the culmination of it. When King Messiah is here. You know, in my studies the last six months, this idea of getting away from the modern... United States view of just heaven only and getting back to biblical basics all through the prophets to the physical Jesus is going to be here it's really helped me in times of, of uh, temptation times when I'm being grouchy or, 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 or short with people or worrying I, I fast forward and I think I'm going to be living in a kingdom where Messiah is the king. And sometimes we hear that and it's easy to do. Like, okay, he's going to be here on the earth. Okay, cool. Whatever that happens. A zillion years from now, next week, whatever. Eons. But we're physically going to be in his presence. And I, even in my prayer life, that's helped me. I'm thinking, man, one day, whether I'm in the crowd or face to face, I'm going to see God physically in the flesh. Kind of like what Job did. I, my, though my eyes decompose and my body decays, yet in my physical eye, I will see my Redeemer on the earth. I'm thinking, what a trip to see Jesus, to bow the knee. A human being, but God. And that helps me today when I realize I need to bow to my pride. I need to bow to my fears. I need to bow and practice now. If the Holy Spirit has come into my life and He's made me a kingdom citizen, and if I'm to be a witness that the kingdom is, has come and it's coming, and if the kingdom is made of all Gentiles and Hebrew people, woe is me if in the now I make distinctions amongst people. Not just color, but people who are doing good in their spiritual walk, people who are not poor, rich, People who've hurt me or haven't. And that helps me now to realize our prayer. Thy kingdom come. Your will be done. Prepare me the way it is going to be in your kingdom. Let my life be a kingdom life. The way I respond to uh, broken relationships, stresses, my own human fallenness, etc. So we live by faith that the kingdom has come and the kingdom is coming. How do you do that? Well, he gives us the uh, the how. And I'll get ready to exit in a little bit, and we'll pick it up next week. By the power of the Holy Spirit. In verse 8, he says, Go back and wait, and the power of the Holy Spirit will give you power. Power to first be a child of the kingdom. 
In John chapter 1, John says, And all who receive Messiah, King Jesus, through faith, God gave them exousia, the right, the authority, the power to become children of God, who are not born of human will, but who are born by the sovereign will of God. So the Holy Spirit, one, gives us power to be His children, to be kingdom people. Not everyone is a kingdom people. That's why you don't see kingdom living on the news. You see anything but kingdom living on the news. So just to become a child of God, a kingdom child, the Holy Spirit. So He says, wait, you're going to receive power. You need power just to, be, to truly belong to the kingdom and to me, for me to be your king. And then two, you're going to receive power to be witnesses courtroom evidence or a sign are the way we do business our marriages the way we handle money the way we handle uh, conflict can all be signs signs of the kingdom of God that Jesus came that he rose from the dead that there's a coming kingdom people should be able to look at our lives over time and it is we are works in progress never perfect always uh, capable of blowing it but over time sh people should be able to see this guy this gal's living like there's a king like there's a kingdom coming a different type of reality their values are based on that kingdom as they watch your marriage as they watch your parenting as they watch your the way you do business if they wait watch the way you handle conflict we should be evidence that a king messiah has come and that a king messiah is returning to be king. And no, we can only do that by the power of the Holy Spirit. Good luck if you try to be a kingdom sign on your own. So we need the Holy Spirit. We need the word every day. Lord, use me to be a sign, to be an evidence that your kingdom has come and that it's coming and one day will be fully realized. So kingdom signs, witnesses, Well, I think I'm going to stop about right there. And next week, we'll talk about other things about the Holy Spirit and the kingdom starting, the launch, and how the Holy Spirit can empower us in different areas of our life. And as the worship team comes, let's just have a few moments of prayer. If you have faith in Christ, and the spirit of Jesus lives in you. You are forever a child of the kingdom. But sometimes we run out. From our perspective anyway of the Holy Spirit. We need fresh infillings of the spirit. Before we sing this song. Why don't you just have a silent time of prayer. Just say Lord fill me. Your kingdom has come. It's coming. The Holy Spirit gives power. Fill me with power to be a sign. That when people look at my life. My marriage my conflicts, my challenges, that they could see that I'm being prepared for a kingdom, that they could see that I have a king. Let's just pray for the Holy Spirit to give us power in all these things. Fill us up, Holy Spirit. Give us power to be signs, evidence, witnesses that you are the king that you've come to save that you're returning to establish your kingdom give us power to live like you're our king king over all our challenges king over all our problems thank you that you're our king in Jesus name, amen